Many like-minded Christians, it was powerful. The presence of God was so thick, even waiting six hours in line. So we met some awesome Christian men and women who have some amazing podcasts. And uh, one, one guy has products for healing cancer naturally. And so we have some great connections we've made. I think Pastor Jason's going to be on a podcast here in a couple weeks. He doesn't have to go anywhere. It's all through the web. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Anyway, it was always good to be home. Um, our great ladies at the daycare kept things rolling, and um, nothing major happened. Praise God. Anyway, it's good seeing you all. I have no idea if I'm on a time limit, probably. What's funny is I usually am the shortest person uh, with the, the shortest message. This is what I'm looking for here. But today may be a little different. So a few months ago when Miss Faye asked me to uh, speak, I immediately started um, asking the Lord what did he want me to speak on, and I kept hearing inner vow judgment. And so it, it's a little lengthy, because I'm going to start with judgment. So, so this is how it's going to go. And I'll probably read my notes a lot. So you all know from the time of Adam and Eve, God is a God who created spiritual laws, right? Like law of gravity. If we're going to throw something in the air, what's it going to do? Unless it's helium, <laughs> it's going to fall. It's going to fall right back to the ground. So there are three laws we're going to, I'm going to speak on today, and really just asking the Lord to have ears to hear, um, hearts to receive, hearts to check. You know, it's always good as Christians to check where we are in life with attitudes. Um, the three laws, law of judgment, law of sowing and reaping, and law of inner vow. So I'm going to just try to touch a little bit on each one. And I do not have the paper to pass out, but I will have it. So you're going to have a little take-home sheet, and it is going to be an awesome little prayer. I'm going to copy it here in a little bit, and before you guys go to lunch, you can grab one or after lunch. How's that? It's powerful. So Matthew 7, 1, 3. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Okay, we all kind of know that verse, don't we? Let's, if we've been a Christian very long, you're going to know that verse. To judge. So Jesus says, judge not that you not be judged. For with that judgment you will be judged, and the measure you use will be measured back to you. So one way that we judge, this is who you are. Have we ever in a time said these things? And probably all of us can say yes. <laughs> we look at a person, this is who you are, this is what you do, and this is who you will always be. Those are three ways we judge, right? That's, that's pretty typical. Um, other examples, men with long hair, older people, maybe judging the younger, younger generation for um, reckless and out of touch, right? Young people judging the older generations that we just don't get it and are never going to understand, right? I mean, these are just things, these are just easy little examples Hard-working people may judge people who are lazy. People who have money and are wealthy may judge those who are less fortunate and don't have anything. These are just areas in our life at some point we could judge. So there was a time when we were first married, we were in a church here for about nine, ten months here in Martinsville, but God moved us up to a church on the north side of Indy. And we walked in there, and it was pretty wild. I mean, it was, it was like a church with an open heaven. I mean, it was powerful what God was doing in the place. But there was all kinds of variety of people. Now, you know, 
from Martinsville, you go up somewhere, I mean, you're seeing different colors of hair, and this was 11, 12 years ago, so it's not what we see now. It wasn't normal in Martinsville at that time. So we go up there, not only the hair, the tattoos that were just everywhere, not a little tattoo, you know, this is my mind, this is what I'm thinking. So immediately, the Lord brought into my heart, hey, you were judging. I mean, immediate. Like, I wasn't hardly there any weeks at all. And he started dealing with my heart. And I remember when we left the place and the Lord had us uh, move on. And I remember the Lord, um, I'm me rejoicing over the Lord that I listened to him. I repented. I turned from what I was thinking because I wanted to. I didn't want those judgments. You know, when he brings, makes us aware of things, it's good to just repent quick and go on with the lesson learned and doing what's right. Because anytime we have that in our hearts, our minds, and it's so easy, I mean, it's something so easy, the smallest thing can trigger it back to come right back. Um, we, we lose out on God's other fruit, right? So like Miss Ashley said, like none of us know what each other's speaking today. And she starts with the charge and... Um, I thought that was awesome because I lost my train of thought. You said something until he goes with this. Um, it'll come back to me here in a minute. Oh, it, the great exchange, an exchange. So when we give him our judgment, he wants to give us the good gifts. He always replaces something he takes from us as we're learning it and gives us something of greater measure from his word and who he is. And when our hearts are right, we should always want to be receiving more and more and more. Because that's us going from glory to glory to glory as we live our Christian life. So as I got in the Word, and I was looking the Greek up for judge, it is the word krino. There's actually two words in the Greek for, for judge. Krino, it's 2919 in the Greek. It's to distinguish, to decide mentally or judicially to condemn, damn, or determine. So judging, like I walked in that church and I kind of had an attitude of condemning these people, the ones that were wild looking, okay? <laughs> I just did. Um, I think it's awesome how God even reconnected with one. He's a pastor now in Fountain Square. He had dreadlocks all the way down his back I love long hair on guys if it, it fits them, but I've never been fond of dreadlocks. So here, you hear me? Like, if it fits them? Like, um, so, yeah, and should we say that this is an ongoing thing? Like, how he brings things back to us just as we talk? Like, okay. Uh, but I always have, like, long hair on guys. But the dreadlocks, to me, seem dirty. So, you know, and I'm just like, who is it? the guy was sweet as could be, wasn't he? Now he's a pastor. The Lord has reconnected us in the Fountain Square area, and he's actually been down to um, North Georgia. He's been down here to our water immersion services. We met a lot of his people. We've been, he holds an awesome prayer meeting monthly for pastors. So the guy is just going gung ho for the Lord. But when we met him, I didn't even recognize him because he cut his hair. He had his head now is just like almost like Jason's. So, yeah, he has no hair. He has no dreadlocks. And not that any of that matters, and we know that. But do you see what I'm trying to, you all get what I'm saying here. Um, so, I had decided in my mind when I first saw him years ago, something about that wasn't true. I mean, he always loved the Lord, and the Lord is always growing him as he's seeking him and living for him. So, all those examples I gave are unrighteous judgments. Does that make sense? So there's, there's a right way to judge and there's an unrighteous way. All right, I wanna go on to this point. I have good news. <laughs> there is a healthy way and a healthy response to life's issues without forming the unrighteous judgment. Does that make sense? Oddly enough, the Greek word number two for, for judge is krima. 2917. Now, this word means to evaluate without condemning. 
And that's where we all need to be, right? So, so what I learned in this, and obviously is still learning, put on the shelf what your own opinion may be about somebody, right? When you've, and this is just appearance. This is just one thing. It could be, it could be in our relationships all through our life. There's things that we may have judged. There are things we may have misperceived, right? So these things you put on the shelf and you allow the Lord to work. And as, as you're doing that, as you repent, as you ask the Lord to turn things around in your heart, he will start revealing the truth to that situation that may have bothered you. You may even feel stuck in, right? That, that's exactly what has happened and will continue to happen. So Romans 2.1 says, therefore, all right. You all know what therefore means? You go before and you see what he just said. So let me go to Romans. I have it marked here. So I'm going to read just above Romans 2. I'm going to start with 1, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all things of unrighteousness, sexually immoral, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, their whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, inventors of all things evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. So these are the things that God says here about therefore. You are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the very same things. So as I go on, has there been a time in your life where you may have judged in a way I will not? Have we all done the I will nots? So these are the inner vow judgments. I will never walk away. I'll never be like my mom. I'll never be like my dad. I'm never gonna drink. There was a young man when he was a boy, his father was an alcoholic. He hated and despised that from the time it took from him. You know, if the dad was drunk, the dad was never home. Lost that time of his boyhood and childhood with his father. So he grows up and he says, I'm never going to drink. And that is an inner vow he made to where it's exactly what he did. And we probably all can see one thing, maybe one, maybe more. But there's things we've said, I will never and then we've seen ourselves fall into that. That's an inner vow. The key to freedom is to break the inner vow, acknowledge the pain of the situation, release forgiveness, and renounce the inner vow. And that's what the sheet I have that I'm going to print out. It's an awesome little prayer. And you all get to take it home and do it because we're not going to have time. Also, if we get in the water later, anybody that wants to get in the water and just leave those things with Jesus, that's another way. The enemy is a legalistic, the one who brings charges against us, like the prosecutor. Jesus is our attorney, and God is our judge. As freedom occurs, the Lord loves replacing our junk for his good gifts. I want to share real quick about sowing and reaping. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, 
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap the flesh of corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. God's laws do not change. What we sow, we will reap, whether it's good or bad. Now, does God listen to our hearts cry when we forgive? He absolutely does. Does he have freedom and healing for us? Yes, he absolutely does. There are many times he will work quick when we humble ourselves. He turns things around quickly. He wants us to be on the right path in right relationships with people. He is the greatest of restoring relationships and reconciling friendships. He just is. That's just what he does. He is so faithful. Also, when we speak, I will never, going back here a minute, it makes us the judge, the jury, and the executioner. I missed that on my notes. I don't want to be the judge. I don't want to be the jury or the executioner. <laughs> when we know, you know, and as we were worshiping, the Lord showed me something. There was a season, well, just from generational things, I could not trust. I had a, a huge issue with fear. And when God freed me of fear was the first time, wow, I was never trusting God. So when he takes something from us is when all, also we will realize what we were not operating in. Does that make sense? And he's so gracious to show us, especially if you're, I always want to know. Like if the Lord is saying something, I... I won't say why, I'll just, but I just say, well, I want to see the big picture of all this. So he's always showing me like the full cycle of an issue. Does that make sense? Does he work like that with anybody else or anybody else care? <laughs> Some people just want to get free and they don't even care. They just go on. But I want to know the fullness of the whole thing. So he's so faithful in that. He is so good. But about the fear, when we were singing that one song, he showed me that when we have an issue of judgment, that is our lack of trusting him with the situation that we're judging, whether it's the people, whether it's a job, whether it's something that's happened in your life. It's always seeming to be relational, isn't it? So I just felt, this is what I felt the Lord lead me to with scripture, the little message he gave me. And I know when we first talked about all this, we felt as a team impartation would take place. So I think I am just kind of going to end with a, just a little prayer or um, something we can receive if we would all just stand and maybe raise our hands. Father, we want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us and leading us into the truths of judgment, sowing and reaping, and inner vow judgments. And Lord, we give these things to you. We thank you, Father, for your grace, graciousness, for your mercies are new every day. We thank you, Father, for your love. Lord, we would just impart to the people what you have from heaven, that they could get over this if this is an issue in their life. There's a reason, Lord, you have had me bring it up today. Any person here, whether they go home and then they realize such and such, I just ask God for your graces and mercies to be about every person who's hearing my voice. And this place of judgment that they could operate in, you would tear down and bring to them every good and perfect gift you have. We just impart, Lord, to them the graces and mercies of who you are and your love. And give them understanding. Lord, that is true. Understanding brings extra healing. It, it gives you the full picture of things. So do we just release understanding and have hearts to quick to forgive, the quickness to forgive. We love you, Lord, and we praise you for who you are. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And I obviously need to share <laughs> the 12 grandkids. I'll end with the introduction. How's that? So we've got 12 grandkids, ages 9 to almost 1 now. Oh, my word. Time fly. Anybody else here know how time flies? You can't even make it up. Like, so busy. We love every one of them and love their little personalities and seeing them grow. We are busy with life, but it's all good, isn't it? All right. Oh, I'm supposed to look at that screen. Our five sons. <laughs> Can't forget the five sons where three of them have all the 12 kids. My two sons have not begun yet, which is fine. <laughs> Give us a little time to enjoy the 12 before the next set comes, right? Anyway, we love our kids. And I know all you ladies here are great mothers and grandmothers. And um, it's just great that you've taken this time this morning to be with us. And we are excited to see what God's going to be doing today through our hearts, in our hearts, through his spirit, bringing more things out of us. It's exciting. The growth of Christian life is exciting, isn't it? You can always look back and see seasons of where he's stretching you, growing you. And sometimes it seems painful, but it is worth it. It is so worth serving him and loving him. All right. Thanks for your time. Get out and vote early. Thank you, Pastor Shelley. Um, I was listening to her teach, and I love how God always intertwines our messages. Last year, I had a lady tell me, she goes, it was like opening a book and just reading it from one message. It's like turning the page to the next message to turning the page. And so I believe God's going to do the same thing because that's how he operates. He is a God of order. And um, so, but as she was talking and was thinking, I got to thinking about how we have a tendency to look through the lens of our own eyes when we see situations or individuals and we begin to place and project onto them. At the beginning of this year, the Lord spoke to me and he usually kind of pours into me. He's like, hey, there's three things I want you to focus on or there's one thing I want you to focus on. This year there was three. And the first one was don't project which means that I couldn't take the things that are my insecurities, the hurts, the pains, the fears, the rejections that I've experienced in my life and project them onto the people that God was bringing into my life. You know, and he said, he said, and then don't, don't conform, which means I wasn't to allow the insecurities of other people to cause me to conform to what they thought I should be or who they thought I should be. Because the truth is, is the entirety of my life, I was a conformer. Whomever I was with, I was, what they, I was who they said I was. 